Welcome, pen friends. This is Tom with Gold Spot Pens. Today, we have an unboxing, and as you can see, it's for an Aurora pen. They are celebrating their 100th anniversary, so you have Cento, and these are exclusive box sleeves that are made just for pens manufactured this year. And we're taking a look at what is considered to be a classic model, but also has a new element added to it. And we'll get to that as soon as we're done getting everything else straightened up here. So you can see we've got a nice red box sleeve. And we're going to take off the box sleeve. We're going to leave it here for right now. And this is, as you might have seen, uh, if you've ordered an Aurora Optima or 88 before, this is the large size gift box. It's a two-part shoebox style. It opens up here and it's got a little flap that allows you to access the inner box, which is a nice sort of leatherette material that's got a little something on there. But this leatherette material, it's got uh, Aurora is stamped on the front here. Uh, it's plain otherwise. But this opens up and reveals the pen inside. A nice creamy white leatherette material all in the inside has the Aurora logo from 1919, made in Italy. And also has a mark on here that this has a 14 karat. Now, solid gold is something that some people kind of get a little upset about because when you say solid gold, you think 21 karat is solid. Or no, 24. I'm sorry, 24 is solid. Um, but 14, it's just talking about the fact that it's not gold-plated. That this is a 14-karat gold nib through and through, just not the plating. Most pens, it's just usually the plating. But this is a solid gold nib, being that it's gold through and through. But it's made of 14-karat, which is about 58.5% real gold. Hello, Dominic. Dominic says hello from Germany. We just came from Germany. So you have the underside here of the platform which you pull out has the Aurora pamphlet. A little bit of history, filling instructions for the piston fill mechanism, different languages and whatnot. So useful to have around as always. We'll put it at the bottom and set the base back here. So quite a substantial box for quite a substantial pen. Something that you would expect with a beautiful writing instrument like the Aurora 88. It's a very classic profile, cigar shaped rounded ends on both finial sides here. The band is a beautiful detail, has, a, has the Aurora logo kind of written in script font, very old style. <clears throat> the clip has a tapered and ends in a teardrop end. We also have Jeremiah checking in from Ireland. Man, this is cool. Like, we're getting a worldwide audience here today. So, it just unscrewed the cap here, and we reveal the nib. And this is the part that we're going to dedicate most of the... Uh, actual content of the video on is talking about the nib because the nib is new it's what's called a cm but it's called a gocha nib and gocha is italian for drop and the reason why it's called drop is that it has a rather large sphere or a large drop of iridium that is at the very tip of this 14 karat gold nib and it's been shaped in such a way that affords a different and unique writing experience. And we'll definitely talk about that. So, uh, but first, more details about the 88 pen. It has an ink window, which you really can't distinguish that that's an actual ink window because it has ink in it already. So you can see that there is there is ink inside of here. I put some Aurora Blue Black in this pen to start off with for this demonstration. This part here is a blind cap. It activates the inner piston mechanism which moves the piston head back and forth and fills up the pen. Very plain, I mean, this is all uh, just a very, very beautiful black polished resin. 
everything is black resin and except for of course the you have the gold bands here uh gold trim gold nib but other than that the all resin construction here has um well, it's not exactly a lightweight feel because you do have the metal components and you have the in inner piston mechanism kind of giving everything a little bit more of a substantial weight, but it does feel exceptionally comfortable in the hand because it is a mostly resin pen. Uh, Aurora does offer this 88 in models that do have a little bit more uh, of a substantial hardware to them, I'm thinking particularly of the Cigaro, uh, which has like a lacquer over brass and has a substantial heaviness to it. Uh, but the uh, resin like this, these are a little bit on the lesser expensive side uh, because they are more constructed out of a lighter and less expensive material than, you know, getting involved with brass and everything. So uh, just talking about the nib, mo uh, the pen model itself, the 88 is, uh, is a resin with gold trims and clip, piston mechanism for filling, has an ink window, 14 karat gold nib with some nibs depending if it's limited edition will usually be available in an 18 karat nib and usually will be much more expensive the pen length closed is 5.4 inches or 136 millimeters you have the pen length open without the cap is 5.1 inches or 130 millimeters then the pen length with the cap posted on the back end is 6.2 inches or 157 at 0.6 millimeters. Then you have the maximum diameter of the barrel, probably about this part here, is 0.6 inches or 14 millimeters. And then you have the grip section, just about like kind of like at its midpoint, is 0.4 inches or 10.4 millimeters. The pen weight, like I said, it's a resin pen. It does weigh under an ounce at 0.7 ounces or 21 grams. So definitely not a heavyweight pen, but yet, not really meant to be a heavyweight pen. This is more along the lines of when we had discussed about the Pilot Custom 912, where you're talking about a pen that is more about the writing experience rather than the looks and all of the other bells and whistles about it. So let's definitely talk about the nib. The nib is something new. It's uh, designed and certified by the in-house nib meister or nib master, Filippo Loguero. And it's considered to be a calligraphy nib. That's what the CM stamped on the ebonite feed means. The CM here is the calligraphy medium. Uh, this gocha nib, and you know what, what we'll actually do, I have my, um, this is an Olo clip macro lens. I'm just gonna slide it over the camera so we could take a more close-up look here. So the Gocha nib, as you can see here, it reminds, me, reminds me kind of right off the bat of like one of the Sailor Specialty nibs. And there's a very specific reason for the nib to be shaped this way. It provides line variation in a different way than a normal round nib would be. A normal round nib is not going to have that triangular sort of shape at the end and not that curve that you would see there either. So... It, it, this, so this is definitely something that's a bit more of a unique offering that you wouldn't see in your normal everyday, like extra fine, fine, medium, broad, or even italic or stub. This this guy is is something different. Um, what I would characterize it as is, 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 especially if you have pens that are like this, is sort of a uh, an architect meets a zoom nib. And we'll show exactly what that means in just a second. So if you've had enough of the, the macro nib, you know, we could kind of get started and take a look at a writing sample. Although I'm kind of having fun just kind of zooming up on the the features here. I mean, that, that um, stamping that's on the nib there is just, it's exquisite with the little scroll work and the 585 and the 14K Aurora. That just looks really cool. I think you just even take a look at this too, just to kind of, see it up close. This is the cap band, which looks really cool up close. So I'll take the lens off here. So like I said, we fill this up with Aurora Blue Black. We'll take a look and do a little bit of a writing sample here.
So just kind of getting a, a base understanding of what this is all about. Black ink. Kind of like how the zoom nib operates, the more perpendicular you hold the nib to the paper, so if we're holding the nib more vertically, it's going to provide a lighter line. So let's show what that looks like. This is the downstroke with the nib pointed mostly in a 90 or just maybe just a little less than 90 degree angle to the paper. Then this is the nib when we do, so that was a vertical stroke. This is a horizontal stroke with the same, relatively the same angle to the paper. I don't know if you might be able to pick up just a slight hint of the sound that this kind of has a little slight toothiness. You could kind of hear the feedback a little bit on the horizontal strokes, but you're getting a thicker line with the horizontal stroke than you do with the vertical stroke. Now, with the nib, with the pen and the nib kind of meeting the paper at a more acute angle, now this is what we're going to show for a vertical stroke. And just to kind of compare it right next to it. This is a, it's a little bit thicker. The more acutely I hold the pen to the paper, and then this is going to be the horizontal stroke. And then this is 90 degree. So you can see there is a variation between how you hold the pen is how you'll get either a, a thinner line with still with line variation based on either if you're going with a vertical or horizontal stroke, and then you would get even a thicker version of that writing it with it at an acute angle. So this is very similar, like I said, to an architect nib. Because architect nibs are shaped so that you would get a thinner down a thinner downstroke. And a thicker horizontal. And one of the things I did note with writing with it a bit more at the 90 degree angle is that you did feel a bit more feedback with the pen at a more acute angle with that thicker line. It's extremely smooth, like super, super smooth. So, so like writing, I would say at a, an acute is going to be super smooth. And you can't even hear, I mean, you can when I, let's say, do a very broad stroke, but like if I, if I bring it up a little bit more, you would hear that nib kind of still kind of getting a little bit of feedback against the paper, but doing it with it, doing these lines with the pen more acutely to the paper, it's much, much more of a smoother writing experience and has wonderful flow. This, this pen has like an amazing amount of flow it's a nice wet writer, especially when you have it more acute to the paper. Now, like I mentioned before, this, this pen itself is not new. The nib itself is the new part of this whole arrangement. The, um, the, the introduction of this specialty nib um, being that it has a certification, it comes from the nib master, Filippo. He's the one that works on these nibs separately, individually. So being that it's not part of the standard set, we already know that, let's say that 14 karat flex um, does come in a bit more in the higher price range. Uh, when you're looking at the Optimas or the 88s in the, in the flex model, they are a little bit higher priced than your normal Optima or 88 
version. The um, so for example, if you wanted to on goldspot.com, you could get the 14 karat flex nib, and that retails for 4.95 for just the nib only. We uh, we sell it at a discount, of course. Um, for the standard, uh, 14 karat nib. We have them, they are listed at 395. And this is your extra fine, fine, medium, so on. The Gocha nib is sold at a 545 retail. And this is just the nib only. So if you have a 88, uh, an Optima, then if you want just the, the Gocha nib, it is 545 retail. We end up usually taking a 20% uh, discount off of there, usually with, with most Aurora products. So, um, but then again, those, also those could possibly change. You know, this video is going to stay up on our channel, so um, don't hold me to that. If it does change, they always change prices and everything like that. So, uh, but just right now at the moment, that's what it's usually going for. If you wanted to get a a uh, pen, a brand new Aurora pen in an 88 or Optima with the Gocha nib upgrade. It would be an additional $150 on top of the pen's MSRP. So if the pen, for example, like an Optima, um, let's say, I, I don't know them off the top of my head, but let's say an Optima is like 500 bucks, the, uh, just with the normal 14K nib, um, then you're talking a Gocha nib version would be 650. So, you know, for that, for that nib upgrade. Um, kind of giving you just my feedback on if this sort of configuration is is worth it. I mean, it's it's meant for somebody who really enjoys their writing experience. There's a lot more people these days that are getting interested in the architect uh, style, particularly as a, a nib of choice. It offers something that's a little bit more of a of a different um, writing experience and your standard stubs or other just normal round writing nibs would provide. Um, so this does kind of give you uh, a, a unique um, appealing sort of way of being able to vary up your handwriting and give you a different look as far as how your uh, pen is going to perform. I really enjoy it. I think it's a very um, comparable to, let's say, a Sailor, which I did bring out the Sailor nibs here, uh, Sailor Zoom nib kind of gives you around that same line thickness, especially if you bring it down and have it at more of an acute angle. So the zooms, the zooms are pretty nice as well, although I would say that the Gocha probably is a bit more on the smoother side, um, but the, the zoom is like your kind of your analog in the Sailor variety. Um, this pen, uh, I, I, I thank you for uh, Arun, Arun Naba. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize if I'm butchering it, but um, does the pen have a sweet spot? So, I mean, definitely I would say it, it writes a lot smoother when you have the nib. And if you imagine this is the paper, if you have the nib more at this angle, if you're looking at my finger and this is the paper surface, if you're writing more acutely to the page like this, it's going to be a lot smoother. If you're going to write more like this, the line's going to be thinner and you're going to feel a little bit more of that feedback. Um, but either way, it does have a, a quite a nice flow. And as far as like a sweet spot is concerned, I feel like you could write with this pen, pen at a lot of different angles. It seems to have a pretty decent sweet spot on it and uh, definitely a lot more smoother and a lot more of a wet flow when you write with it more acutely to the page. And I actually did test earlier, um, the pen does write 
with the nib upside down. But it's extremely scratchy. It probably gives you like a 0.2 or even less as far as your nib, as far as your line width. Um, but it's extremely scratchy. But it does write upside down like I just showed you there. The, um, the appeal here is that you have a lot of line variation that could be generated just from the one nib and doesn't require a flex uh, or the ability to flex the nib to operate it and to take advantage of the, all the different uh, line widths that are capable of this pen. So, um, but I mean, you, in order to do most of that, you would have to go to a nib meister and get this pen, um, or not this pen, but like your pen, if you wanted an architect nib, those aren't things that are standard. So you would have to go take your pen send it away, get it, um, get it fixed by a nib meister and, you know, maybe go back and forth because maybe it doesn't write nicely after it gets adjusted. So you have to kind of, you know, work with it a little bit, but like this right out of the box, it's beautiful. It's made by Aurora in Italy, in the factory in Torino, the nibs themselves are made there and you have a certified nib master that actually makes this nib and will stand behind it. So this is a pretty cool um, introduction by Aurora, and I like the way that a lot of these pen makers are going, offering more specialty nibs and different nib sizes um, other than just fine and medium. It's always good to see that. Whether it's actually worth it for you for the additional charges, that's kind of more of a subjective. Um, me personally, I'm, uh, you know, I don't really like look at pens at, at this budget very often but uh um you know if if this was something that is kind of more in your realm of of purchasing uh this is definitely a pen that uh would be worthwhile considering or just getting the nib uh to put on it on a uh, aurora pen that you already own let's say it's a limited edition or uh is a special edition that it has particular sentiment to you but you want it to give it a completely different uh, characteristic of being able to write with it, you could do that with this nib and buy the nib separately as well. So I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in and taking a look at the Aurora 88 with the Gocha nib. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you have any other suggestions on video unboxings and other things that we could be doing on the Gold Spot Pen channel, feel free to also send those uh, our way as well. And we're always looking for feedback from our community. And we always appreciate you guys tuning in and checking out all of our videos and subscribing and liking and